Next up, it's our science segment, and we're going to take a look at Google's announcement that it has cracked a key challenge in quantum computing with a new chip capable of almost unfathomable speeds. Dubbed Willow, the chip performed a standard test in under five minutes, whereas today's fastest supercomputers would have completed it in Billions of years. That's right. Five minutes versus billions of years. And here to help explain this very difficult subject to us is our science editor, Julia Seeger. Hello there, Julia. Hi. All right. Quantum computing, you know, sometimes people's eyes might just glaze over. Help us understand what this is all about in a way that even us non-tech nerds can, can I'm try to dumb it down as much as I can. Now, Google has indeed unveiled a new chip. It's called Willow, as you said, and uh, it's a, a revolution in itself because it was able to solve an issue, as you said, in five minutes when our fastest supercomputers today would have taken uh, 10 septillion years. So I just wrote it out so we can all like, you know, really appreciate. Never even uh, heard that the, word the, before. The, me neither, actually. Um, so, you know, so we can really appreciate the step forward. But this chip is actually the latest development in uh, a field that we call quantum computing. Engineers are trying to develop a faster computer, a quantum computer. And to do so, they're relying on what we call quantum mechanics. Now, this is actually very simple. These are the laws that are explaining how very small particle at a microscopic level, how they interact with each other. And actually these very small particles, they have very strange behaviors. They don't actually, um, uh, be, their behavior is like nothing that we actually see in the visible world. Now you have to understand that a normal computer that we have today doesn't function at all like a quantum computer. If we look at a normal computer, for instance, it's gonna take all of the information, let it be text, video, photos, and it's gonna convert it into another language that that we call bits, binary digits. So it's gonna be a series of zero and one. So if you take an example A in binary language, is zero, one, five zeros, and one. And so what happens is that you only have two different possible states. Either a bit is a zero or it's a one. It's much different with uh, a quantum computer. Here, it's going to change the information this time into qubits. And qubits, uh, the difference is, uh, maybe we can take a look at the quantum computer, Th these qubits, quantum bits. Uh, here, they, there are different possible states. So it can either represent a zero or a one or a superposition of different states. So here, what's interesting is that uh, it can really be simultaneously in different states. So it can be 40% zero and 60% one. Now you have to understand, as you're seeing here, it's really not one or zero. It's really uh, the, the combination of both at the same time. And what's interesting here is that it, it just becomes one digit when it's measured. Now here, if you look at the bits, you can create those different combinations, but you can do it one by one, and then you have to look at the result one by one. With qubits, you have all of the states at once, and you can look at it at once at the same time. So that's why the computation goes up so much and so exponentially. And, and that's also why it can explore different solutions for a problem at the same time in a parallel manner. Now, what's interesting here is that this is one of the phenomenon of context. You probably heard about entanglement, interference as well. I'm not going to dig into that as well. But you have to understand that these are just the laws that regulate our world, that regulate matter. And what it tells us today, it explains to us how matter actually works. It's not as solid and idle as as we believe that it is. It's actually much more dynamic. And it's really telling us, suggesting at least, that maybe the Matrix was right. I don't know if you remember <laughs> the Matrix and Neo at one point who is going to discover the Matrix. It's going to be this sort of rain of zeros and ones around it. Well, this is what Quantum is telling us, that maybe we're living in something closer to a multiverse of parallel worlds. So if we knew all this information, we have all this information, what has been holding us back from succeeding in creating a quantum computer? It's a really good question, of course. So, you know, as I said, the normal computers that we have, the classic computers that we have today, they're very stable. It's only two states, zero or one. Quantum computing, on the other hand, the more you increase the qubits, the more you also, the more powerful it becomes, the more rapid, but at the same time, you increase uh, the, the errors as well. And so that's what we call quantum dilemma. And what Google says today is that it was able to reverse that and increase uh, its rapidity and at the same time decrease uh, errors. So what kinds of, of applications? applications, like how is this being 
use currently? How could it potentially help us in the future? Well, it's going to help us in so many ways. I mean, you have to understand that, like I told you, what you do is that you actually submit sticking points that you have in innovation when you're trying to develop something. You can submit that sticking point to the computer that's going to find solutions for you, and it's going to be able to do so in a very quick way. So, for instance, finding a new way of creating a new uh, nuclear reactor, of getting better batteries that have a, a longer battery life, uh, finding new uh, antibiotics. We know that that's a huge issue. And there's also going to be an issue with encryption. Most of the data that we have today, it's encrypted in our computers according to the laws of the computers that we have. But if tomorrow um, a quantum computer arrives, it's going to be able to decrypt all of that information instantly. So just think about for instance, strategic information from companies, state classified information that is turned into plain text instantly. This is why countries are pouring money into this. And this is what we call the race to quantum supremacy. So it sounds like plenty of really applications that could be really good and that could be huge challenges As for, always, for the technology world. Yes. It's always a double-edged sword indeed. All right. Julia Seeger, our science editor, thank you so much.